Now that we have the interface configured the way that you're comfortable with, you're ready to take a look at configuring the video inputs that you connected to the back of the TriCaster. Each input has its own monitor, and as you mouse over each one of these monitors, you'll see controls highlight in the upper right-hand corner. To get to the configuration of that input, click on the gear. Now, once you're in the configuration for the input, there are two tabs, the Input Settings tab and the Live Mat and Cropping tab. We'll start out on the Input Settings tab. From here, you have a pop-up allowing you to choose the resolution and the format of the video coming in on that input. And remember, this can be different from input to input. You also have some proc amp controls allowing you to adjust video levels and some white balance controls. Remember, it's always important to feed the best quality video to the TriCaster that you possibly can. Always remember to white balance your camera and make sure that your camera is feeding the best possible video signal to the TriCaster. Even though you have controls here in the interface for modifying the video, you don't want to use them exclusively. You want to feed the TriCaster the best possible video you can and then use these controls to tweak that video. You also have two network inputs which can be configured by selecting a computer that's on the same network as the TriCaster and that computer needs to be running IVGA software. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. You have your two DDRs down here and right from the interface you'll see that you've got controls for those DDRs and you can start and stop the DDRs right from the monitor interface. You also have an area showing us what's currently inside of the graphics player and again, you can start and stop those players as well right from the monitor interface. The TriCaster also comes with a variety of media players, including two digital disc recorders, or DDRs. Now, these DDRs can play back a wide variety of media, including high definition and standard definition video clips in many different formats, stills, titles, even audio clips can be played from this versatile media player. Let's take a look at loading it up with the media that we're going to use during the live production. The DDRs are located on the first two tabs on the left and right side of the modular tab-based interface. And you see you have transport controls down here. The DDR controls are also available to you right here on the control surface. We have an area for media players on our 450CS, and you can control either of the DDRs, the graphics player, or the sound player right here from the control surface. You can load media into the DDRs by clicking on the Add button and the media browser will show up and it will show you all of the sessions that are currently on your TriCaster. Not only the current session that you're working in, but also all the other sessions. So any media that you've loaded for any session is available for use in any of the sessions in the TriCaster. Simply select the media that you want to load up and click the OK button. You can also look at other media from other external drives by using the browse feature within the media browser, but you want to be careful. You don't want to play any video clips from an external USB drive or try and record anything out to any sort of external USB drive. It's not going to be fast enough to do that. Remember, if you're going to use the content during the live production, you want to import it using the import media function before that live production starts. All of the media players inside of the TriCaster also have presets available. Now presets are like instantaneous playlists. You can instantly change out the media that you have accessible inside of any of the media players. Now again, you can access those by, for the DDR number one, you're going to put the mouse right in the middle over on the left side and then you get all the presets for DDR1. DDR2, over here on the right hand side. So depending upon if your media player is on the right side, the presets are going to be over here and if it's on the left side, they're going to be over here. Now, we can load up a new preset. Click here. This will allow you to quickly and easily organize your media. All the clips for the first half of the show, for the second half of the show, all the clips for a certain segment, or specific types of clips. Clips that are going to be keyed, clips that aren't going to be keyed, clips that are going to be used as motion overlays, all can be organized into these presets. Simply click on a new preset and click Add. Now, when you're loading up content, all of the Windows selection options are available. So single clicking, of course, selects one. If you click on one and you hold down shift on the keyboard and you click on another clip, all the clips in between those two are going to become selected. Or you have the option of holding down the control key and individually selecting clips. Now, if you hold down the control key and you select clips, 
not only will it select those clips, but it will remember the order in which you select those clips, and it will load them into the DDR in that order, ready to go. This TriCaster features a graphics player as well. Now, the graphics player will allow you to play either still images or the live editable title templates that come along with the TriCaster. Let's take a look. The graphics player is available from the tab on the right-hand side right here. And again, you can load either still images or titles. And again, using the presets, you can separate them. So I've got three presets that are filled with images and three presets that are filled with titles so that I quickly and easily have access to all of that media from the graphics player. You load the graphics player up the same exact way, click on the Add button, and add the content to the preset that's currently selected. Now let's talk about configuring the network inputs in the TriCaster. A network input allows you to bring in an external computer's display or an Apple AirPlay device. So if you want to bring in external computer's display, that computer needs to be on the same network as the TriCaster, and it needs to be running a small piece of software called IVGA. There's a version of IVGA available for both Mac and PC, and that comes on the disk that's in the box of accessories that came in your TriCaster box, and it's also available from our registration site. Now, once IVGA is running on that external computer and it's attached to the same network as the TriCaster, it will show up as an input. The network inputs are here on the TriCaster, and again, there's a small pop-down just below the gear. Um, you do have a gear, and you do have ProCam controls here if you should want to use them, but there's a pop-down just below the gear, and this shows you all of the computers that are on the network that are running IVGA. You also have access to the output from programs that NewTek has created, like LiveText. LiveText does come on the TriCaster as part of the TriCaster, but it can only be run in pre-production or post-production, not while you're live. You can buy live text as an external application to run on a PC, and then you can run the character generator externally and send the output of that character generator directly into the network inputs of the TriCaster. So here I've got my computers that are available. I have another one loaded up here. That's why this one is ghosted. And the output of live text that's running on both of those computers as well. Simply select what you want to use for that network input and it comes right up. Now, if you want to be able to bring in an Apple AirPlay device, again, it needs to be on the wireless network. You need to be sending out the Apple AirPlay device and you put the network input on receive. Now, simply select the media that you want to play on your Apple AirPlay device. Once the media is playing, you'll have the ability to select any of the network inputs in the TriCaster that are set to receive. Simply select the input. Your media is now beamed wirelessly directly to that network input, and you can send full frame rate audio with video wirelessly right into the network input of the TriCaster.